Hey guys, how are you doing today? I hope that you're doing amazing and fantastic and wonderful. Cleo is, of course, here. Um, yep, she heard me talk. Do you guys like my sweater? I saw it on ModCloth's website and I was like, this is how aggressively Cleo loves me. And I was like, I just, it was as though this sweater was made perfectly for for me the mom of Cleo so I had to purchase it I just did so it's super super comfy and I like it it's perfect length I just I love it okay so I know I know I know it is the 18th of um September and I'm coming out with the September cozy releases okay guys this month has been super super busy I got knocked down with a virus and then on top of the virus I tripped over the baby gate of Alex of Alex's in the living room and I slammed my knee into the tile and I hurt it really really bad and so it's just been it's just been hectic um, thank you all for those who showed up and uh, were a part of the Cozy Escape Awards. I hope that you enjoyed it and had fun with the 10 videos that we came out for the first 10 days of September. But you're here for the Cozy releases. Now, granted, at the time that I am filming this, only one of the five have come out. So technically, like I'm not behind, right? Like technically I'm not. Okay. So the first one is Deadly Summer Nights. It is a cat skill, cat, cat skill, summer, cat skill, summer resort mystery by Vicki Delaney. This is the first in the series. It looks adorable. It is a uh, 1950s um, cozy mystery. So it says a summer of fun at Catskills Resort comes to an abrupt end when a guest is found murdered in this new 1950s cozy mystery series. It's the summer of 1953 and Elizabeth Grady is setting into Hagerman's Catskills Resort as a vacation getaway. Hagerman's ideal and although Elizabeth's ostentatious and well-meaning mother is new to running the resort, Elizabeth is eager to help her organize and um, get the guests entertained and have different acts and things like that. Um, but Elizabeth will have to resort to untested abilities if she's going to save her mother's business. Hmm... It says, when a reclusive guest is found dead in a lake on the grounds and a copy of the Communist Manifesto is found in his cabin, the local police chief is convinced that the man was a Russian spy. But Elizabeth isn't so sure, and with the fate of the resort hanging in the balance, she will need to dodge red herrings, withstand the red scare, and catch a killer red-handed. Bum, bum, bum! I think this is going to be fantastic. I'm super excited to dive into it. Okay, so I have to talk about this one, even though it's not like in the beginning of the series. I don't, I don't care. I'm super, super stoked about it. So it is Murder at the Pumpkin Patch. This is the 12th book in the Firefly Junction mystery series by London Lovett. She so nicely sent me an arc and I can't wait to dive into it for um, October. Okay. So, Sunny Taylor's sisters, through their power of sisterly persuasion, um, have convinced her to host a Halloween costume party at Cedar Ridge Inn, which everybody knows they believe is haunted, and um, she's trying to avoid that kind of publicity. She's a little reluctant about the whole event and rightly worried about the actual ghost, who will no doubt be in attendance. Um, but she decides to just relax and enjoy it. Of course, you can't have a spooky Halloween party without toothy grinned Jack O'Lanterns. Uh, Sunny talks Jackson into spending their day off at the local pumpkin patch. Uh, the Ricky family farm is famous for its sprawling pumpkin patch and mind-boggling corn maze. Sunny and Jackson look forward to a day in the autumn breeze sipping cider, nibbling on candy corn, and choosing the best pumpkins for the party. But when one of the uh, Riggles is murdered, the day off turns into a murder investigation. And once again, Sunny has front seats to the chaos. 
I love this series so much. It's it's so much fun to read and they're quick, easy reads as well. So if you haven't picked it up, I promise you, you will love them. The next book is called A Perfect Bind. This is a beloved book room mystery series. It's the second in the series by Dorothy St. James. The cover is just giving me fall vibes, which makes me so happy. Um, the last three books, they come out in September, uh, or the, on September 28th. There we go. Okay, so it says, Librarian True Beckett, ardent defender of the printed word, um, is about to find out that keeping murder checked out of her library is much harder than she thought. True Beckett succeeded in building a secret book room in her now bookless library, where book lovers from lovely Cypress, South Carolina, can rejoice in the printed word. Now she's working hard to maintain the little library downstairs while keeping her real job in the bookless technology center. The last thing she needs is a mysterious vandal who seems intent in breaking into her secret book-filled sanctuary and creating chaos. The nasty interloper doesn't steal anything but brutalizes the books, damaging them and knocking them off the shelves. I want to flick them in the nose. That is ridiculous. A patron of the secret book room tells True that there have been creepy goings-ons at the library for years, especially in the basement where the secret book room is located. Um... He's heard rumors of a poltergeist that haunts the library, determined to scare off readers. True isn't, er, is certain it's hogwash, but she's at a loss to think of who might be vandalizing the beautiful books she fought so hard to protect. And when a dead body shows up right behind the library, True is certain that it's not a ghost, but a cold-blooded killer that she and her trusty tabby Dewey Decimal <laughs> uh, will need to uncover. Dewey Decimal. I love it. The next book is A Murder Can Frost Your Donut. A Haunted Craft Fair uh, mystery series. This is book four by Rosie Prezi. And I love the fact that there is Elvis. It says, the ghost of an Elvis impersonator has got psychic painter Celeste Cabot all shook up. Celeste has pulled up in her pink Shasta trailer, aka mobile art studio, to the Sevier County Fair in the mountains of eastern Tennessee to sell her paintings. A highlight of fair promises to be the celebrity impersonation contest. But the low point, or the low point is when Celeste and her floppy eared Chihuahua Van, short for Van Gogh. Uh, find an Elvis impersonator in his trailer doing a great impression of a corpse clutching a donut in his hand. Hmm. Bum, bum, bum. And last but certainly not least is Murder Outside the Lines. This is the third book in the Pink and Pen and Ink series by Krista Davis. I love these covers to this series so much. It's just so good. With Halloween just around the corner, the fall colors in Georgetown are brilliant. As manager of the Color Me Red Bookstore, coloring book creator Flory Fox has arranged for psychic author Hilda Rattenhorst to read from spooktacular ghost stories. But the celebrity medium arrives for the event in hysterics, insisting that she's just saw a bare foot sticking out of a rolled up carpet in a nearby alley. Is someone trying to sweep murder under the rug? Flory calls the, her police beau, Sergeant Eric John Quill. But the carpet corpse has disappeared without a trace. Then in the middle of her reading, Hilda chillingly declares that she feels the killer's presence in the store. Um, is this a publicity stunt or a genuine psychic episode? It seems there's no happy medium when a local bibliophile is soon discovered missing. A strange mystery begins to unroll. Now it's up to Flory and John Quill to expose the killer's true colors. These are all perfect for fall time, if you ask me. I'm super, super pumped to read more into these. They look fantastic. Are there any books that you're super excited about coming out this month? I want to know. Let me know down below. But that's the end of this chapter of Courtagonist. Please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, guys, happy reading. Bye.